Well, good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Karen Booth. I'm the Family and Consumer Science Extension Agent in Hall County. And today I want to talk to you about factors that can improve the physical health and well being of our youth. Next slide. So, when children are young, as parents and caregivers, we are responsible for providing an environment that's going to help them maintain a lifestyle that's beneficial for their physical and mental well being. So, we can all benefit from these lifestyle factors that you see on the screen here, but we can all benefit from making these improvements for our health. So some of these factors that are impactful on our health are poor diet choices, chronic stress, lack of sleep, and excess weight. So with our poor diet, a lot of times we're looking possibly for a one size fix all or fits all food that's going to make us healthy, support our immune system, and help us to lose all that weight. So we want to make sure that we're providing ourselves and our children a balanced diet and we're going to talk more about that. We want to try to avoid chronic stress as much as possible and with everything that's going on, lots of news out there, um, obviously the, the, the pandemic that we're living in right now, we can often find ourselves more stressed out, um, especially if you've you know had issues with figuring out how to send your kid to school or possibly loss of income, things like that. So there's all kinds of stressful factors that are um, playing in on our stress levels right now. Lack of sleep has also been cited as a factor that can definitely affect our health, um, especially with the pandemic and having been at home since March, many of us, our sleep cycles are a little messed up. We don't have that regular sleep schedule and that eight to 10 hours is recommended for both youth and adults. And then excess weight. And we know that excess weight, I've, I heard a joke the other day that COVID-19, the 19 is actually more for the pounds that we might have gained with all the snacks that we ate during the pandemic. So the excess weight, um, you know, you may have added some extra pounds there, but that can contribute to some lifestyle diseases which can include type two diabetes, heart disease, and high blood pressure. And those both affect youth and adults. So we do wanna be mindful of these factors that can negatively impact our health. So next slide. So healthy eating doesn't necessarily have to be burdensome. And you'll see this equation here for health that a balanced diet and some healthy lifestyle factors do help improve our body's ability to fight off infection. So shoot for a balanced meal pattern of whole fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, whole grains, and drinking adequate amounts of water. So you may not know, you might have heard having your five servings of fruits and vegetables, and that's great if the kids can get those five servings, but children ages four and up need about one and a half cups of fruit per day and one and a half to two and a half cups of vegetables each day. Some healthy lifestyle factors include 60 minutes of daily exercise. You may have heard 30 minutes uh, thrown out there for adults too. 30 to 60 minutes is, is what we wanna shoot for, for daily um, activity, getting that heart rate up, getting outside as much as possible, especially if your kids have moved to a virtual school and maybe they're, they don't have that PE time necessarily built in. <laughs> Speaking of virtual school, you also want to be mindful of limiting screen time as much as possible. So you want to create that space to do their schoolwork, but then encourage them to do some other activities other than, you know, watching the TV when they have time to rest and things like that. And then for older adults and maybe even older youth, thinking about, you know, avoiding smoking, taking the stairs as much as possible. So just building in some uh, healthy lifestyle factors is going to contribute to your overall health. So co by combining these factors, we set our bodies up for an improved ability to fight off infection. And that's not only for the coronavirus, but any other viruses and bacteria and things that are going to be out there as we get back out um, into our daily lives and into the school routine that we're about to go back into, or many of you have already started in. Next slide. So consider using this plan to help guide your balanced diet. So as always, be sure to work with a physician before you make any uh, big changes to your diet. But a healthy, balanced meal, again, includes those whole fruits and vegetables, varying your vegetables as much as possible, making half of your grains a whole grain, and varying your protein routine. It doesn't always have to be a steak or a piece of chicken. Beans and peas are also great sources, nuts, peanut butter. 
um, lots of different plant-based proteins that are also more cost-effective for your budget. You may have seen this model before. Um, this is the USDA's My Plate. And so it's actually taken the place of the food guide pyramid. And so if you look at it, it actually helps you to realize to be making your plate half fruits and vegetables, half grains and protein. And then the dairy group is represented by a milk glass. And you see there it says move to low fat or fat free milks and yogurts. So this is just a great way to visualize your plate instead of having to try to figure out if you're balancing your pyramid the correct way. So consider using this as a guide to help balance your meals. So next slide. So as your kids are getting back into school, especially if they are going in person or maybe they're just getting around more students, I've heard some families talk about doing a model where they're getting groups of kids together in the neighborhood to do their virtual school together. So thinking about how can we support immune systems through our balanced diet. So there are some um, nutrients that play a great role in supporting our immune system and preventing or fighting off infection. So some of these you're already eating and are part of a balanced diet. Some of them you might be surprised to learn about. So protein is a great um, immune supporting source and it actually helps with healing and recovery. And you can vary your proteins like I mentioned earlier with non-meat options like beans, nuts, and eggs. And those are usually kid-friendly foods for the most part. Uh, vitamin A, you might have heard that as the vitamin that helps your eyes a lot, um, but this can actually help regulate your immune system and protect against infection. And so some foods that contain vitamin A, you might have heard the red and orange vegetables. So thinking about sweet potatoes, broccoli, carrots, bell peppers, eggs, and then also vitamin A can be fortified or added later into foods um, like milks and cereals, which who doesn't like a good bowl of cereal in the morning? So ramping up your vitamin A there. And then vitamin C, we hear that one all the time, especially around cold and flu season. And uh, so vitamin C helps stimulate the formation of antibodies, which are gonna help fight infection. And so citrus fruits, we know, you know, oranges, grapefruits, things like that. Your strawberries, fruit juice, and then again, there's that fortified cereal. So those are all great sources of vitamin C. Next slide, okay. And then you've got vitamin E. So vitamin E works as an antioxidant and helps to support immune function as well. So fortified cereals, sunflower seeds, almonds, peanut butter are great sources. Zinc, if you've been following any kind of recommendations or maybe you've talked with your doctor and they've mentioned zinc as being able, as being helpful to fight infection. Zinc actually supports the proper functioning of the immune system and does help heal wounds. Um, some natural sources of zinc are going to be your lean meats, whole grains, milk, beans, and seeds. And then other um, great immune supporting nutrients are going to be folate, B6, B12, and iron. Um, a lot of those are also found in fortified cereals, but always be sure to work with your healthcare provider before you add any supplements or um, you know, any kind of change that you're looking to make in your diet, just be sure that you work with your healthcare provider because sometimes supplements can um, change the way that your body processes medications that you've already been taking. So you do just wanna make sure that you work with a healthcare provider. Um, it's important to note that a balanced meal consumption actually does add value to your instructional day for your students. So studies have shown that students who feel full from you know, balanced meals. It does improve their, their focus, their memory, their impulse control, and it actually decreases time spent in the nurse's office or sick days due to issues caused by hunger, which could be headaches or low blood sugar. And that goes for youth and adults. Another note here is try to remember, just like you might schedule time for activities or time away from the screens, be sure that you're scheduling time to eat meals. You want your, your students and yourself to get full from a meal and not be constantly snacking all day, but not actually filling yourself up with healthy foods. So remember to schedule that time. Try scheduling those meals and snacks instead of just snacking all throughout the day. So I wanna provide you with some healthy lunch option ideas, and these would be great for 
virtual or in-person school days. And it would also be great to get your kids involved with packing their lunches and in the kitchen. So some ideas that I want to highlight are creating your own pasta salads, some healthy Lunchables, some dressed up rotisserie chickens, ways that you can use a rotisserie chicken multiple ways, um, taco salads, and then some protein roll-ups. And all of these um, lunch ideas you're going to see are from the Children's Health Care of Atlanta Strong for Life campaign. So go next slide. So pasta salad is a great one that can travel well. Um, depending on what ingredients you include because it can be served cold. It doesn't have to be warmed up. So cold pasta salad is a great option to make with leftover ingredients. Um, it's also easy to make ahead of time and can be eaten on for multiple days. So in order to help with that balanced diet, you can choose whole wheat pasta and that's going to give extra fiber, which is going to help you and your child to feel fuller longer. So you can also dress it up Using Italian dressing, that's a great way to flavor up those foods. Cherry tomatoes, you can use cooked or frozen, uh, excuse me, fresh or frozen vegetables cooked into that pasta salad. And you can also get some extra protein by serving egg along the side. And you see the fruit there in the lunchbox option. Um, another favorite of many kids is going to be the Lunchables. So I did a little research into that. You're spending about three to four dollars on a prepackaged Lunchable that is unfortunately full of processed food and a lot of times extra sodium that might not be beneficial for the kids. So if your child does ask for a prepackaged Lunchable, you could offer them to be able to create their own by getting some low sodium turkey, which would be um, about a third of the amount of sodium that they would be getting in a regular piece of turkey. And then they could also intermingle their favorite fruits and vegetables. Next slide. So another great idea is uh, taking rotisserie chicken and making it however you want. So rotisserie chicken in the refrigerator will last, you know, close to three to four days. So that could be something that you shred up and you prepackage in, in um, little containers there. In this photo, you see it served along with barbecue sauce and a fruit and vegetable. You could also include whole wheat pitas. You could make it into a chicken salad, which um, you know, could do the celery and the grapes and things like that. Or one of the favorite meal planning options for a lot of people is taco salads. They'll do the meal prep on Sundays and you'll see them, them do this. So this would be great to use ground turkey to help um, with the, the fat content and then also to improve their protein intake. And then using, you know, shredded cheese, whole wheat pitas, things like that. So it's a great way to allow the kids to kind of build their own lunch. Um, and both of these could be served cold. Next slide. All right. And then as far as meal prep goes, uh, it's a great idea and a great option to involve family members together. It shouldn't be a burdensome activity just for the parents to do. There's lots of options for the kids. So it does provide valuable skills. They can improve their science skills if they're looking at baking and how these chemical reactions occur. It also helps with their math skills when they're learning about measuring and if they have to um, double the recipe, maybe they have to divide the recipe or, or maybe you accidentally lose the measuring cup and they've got to figure out um, what the correct measurement is going to be or how, how do they um, double or triple the measurement. And it also helps with language skills if they're learning about reading the recipes and things like that. Um, just like I mentioned earlier, be sure to schedule time for meal prep. This could be done on the virtual days if your kids are sometimes virtual, sometimes in person. This could be done during breaks on the virtual days that they plan their meals and their lunches for the rest of the week. And then also one acronym I like is KISS, keep it simple, silly. So if, if you don't have a lot of time, you can purchase pre-chopped fruits and vegetables or pre-portioned side cups like guacamole cups or things like that that they could um, take along with them and you don't even have to cut those ahead of time. Next slide. And one more note here is just the food safety portion. That is where I spend a lot of my time teaching is in food safety and food preservation. So just be mindful. Um, according to the USDA, actually 50% of the household cases of salmonella occur in infants and school age children. So this could is an estimated number of 1.2 million cases annually of salmonella 
and children and youth. So you do want to be mindful that you're packing safe lunches as well as balanced lunches. So you can use an insulated lunch bag or a container to keep your hot foods hot or cold foods cold. So if you were using one of those thermoses, make sure that the soup or that, you know, whatever you're putting in there is heated before you put it in there. And then uh, make sure that container stays closed up until it's ready to eat. And then keeping your cold foods cold, you want to use two ice sources, one on the top and one on the bottom. So if you have a sandwich or a salad or any of those prepackaged meals we looked at earlier, you would want to put an ice source on the top and the bottom. But you could actually use frozen juice boxes as your ice and then those would be thawed by the time you're ready uh, to eat them at lunch. So these are just some, some tips to look at, being sure that you wash your hands. And after your lunch, if the kids bring their lunch box home, discard all that leftover food. I hear parents all the time say, well, my kid didn't eat their cheese stick and it was in their lunch box all day. And then it came home and they rode on the bus and everything. And so it's been out of the refrigerator for at least six to eight hours. So you would want to go ahead and toss that out. I also do just want to make a note, um, the school lunch program is an amazing opportunity for kids to get exposed to different fruits and vegetables. So if your school um, sends out the menu and it's something that you would love your kid to try, that's also a great option. They put so much work into balancing those meals and offering um, kids tons of fruits and vegetables. So just uh, wanted to make a note about that. So. Now, um, now that we've covered the, the physical well-being of yourself and your child, let's move on to talking about the social and emotional well-being. So I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie.